Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Dratnos' Minecraft Technic Pack Let's Play. Alright, uh, you'll notice that I've hid some of the interface here. I can hit Alt-Z, actually, and do that, which is, uh, I think, pretty awesome. Anyways, let's go ahead and, uh, and see what we got here. We've got some more questing to get done out here with these uh, Blackwater Raiders at Baldir's Cove of the Arathi Highlands. So without further ado, you'll notice that there's actually an animation for pulling out your map now. There's the same animation for reading your mail, I think. Uh, that didn't used to be there. That's new with one of the cata catapatches. Anyways, go ahead and put our map away there. Hey there. This is bad. Oh, wait, that's not the right voice. It should be. This is bad. It seems that the dagger spines are amassing for an attack. Naga are known for their boothlessness in battle. They will keep attacking until I am dead. I don't value my own life above that of my crew members, but you must help to defend me. The crew will not be able to make it back to Booty Bay without my knowledge of the seas. The Naga will be coming up from the sea. I need you to remain here with me and fend off the attack. Man the cannon and drive them back. Are you ready, Fratnotes? All hands to battle stations! Naga incoming! Alright, let's go grab some, uh, some cannon action. Is there a cannon around here? Where be the cannon, laddie? Uh, where, where, is there a cannon we should man from up here? Oh, there's, there's a cannon. Cannon! Awesome! You've plundered our treasures too long. Prepare to meet your watery grave. Ooh, we just shot him. Nice. Gotcha! Gotcha with a cannon. We are manning the cannon. Ooh, there's Lolo the lookout. He's definitely doing some looking out action there. Come on, Naga, come get some. Mmm. Had a nice refreshing sip of uh, Dr. Pepper there as we wait for some more Naga to come attack. Come on! Come at me! Bros. Do it! Come on! Where are you? Is that it? Is that... Is that actually all we have to do here? Are there more Naga, or are they... I guess it maybe gives you time to actually fight them manually if you didn't go get the cannon. If we can just hold them now, I'm sure we'll be in the clear. I should actually be doing a pirate voice. Arr, if we can just hold them now, I'm sure we'll be in the clear, laddie. That's my pirate voice. It's, uh... It's not, it's not that great. It, it's kind of similar to my Scottish voice for the, uh, for the dwarves, but it's okay. You know what? My series, my accents. Mmm. Mmm. And my Diet Dr. Pepper, which is awesome. They've got this new thing on them that looks like Avengers-themed, which I've heard, I've heard is a good movie. I might check that out. Anyways. Oh, here comes another one. Let's, uh, let's justice him with a cannon. Boom. Oh, okay, that was easy. There, there they go. Down they go. They all spawned in and were instantly justiced by our lovely cannon there. I just got Glyph of Cleaving any better, says Dragor. Permanently teaches you this glyph, increases the number of targets you cleave, hits by one. Yeah, that's a, that's a useful one, I think. Anyways. Arr, we survived the attack. We could not have done it without you, Dratnos. We'll be heading out as soon as the tide rises. If you weren't such a promising hero, I'd offer you a place on my crew. But I can tell you have bigger fish to fry, even if you are a puny undead. Ooh, jerk. Hey, nice, we've got some uh, strictly dominant uh, upgrades to our leggies there. They're better in every possible way. And there we go. There's level 20 or, or level 32 even. Nice. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you, uh, gentlemen of Faldir's Cove here. Good to meet you. I'm glad to have uh, had the opportunity to make your acquaintance and uh, do some pirating with you, laddies, and meet these uh, professors here, as we did last episode. Oh, look. It's, there's a full moon here. I'm actually playing this at, at nighttime. You can see the server time is actually midnight 46 here. Oh, oh, 46. Uh, which is, is quite... Quite late, indeed. Kids, don't stay up past your bedtime. But anyways, um, that, that, yes, the world does change, as I think, I think I mentioned this a few times before, but the world actually, like, is, is constant time with the, with the server realm time. So one day in server time is equal to one day in real life, and you can actually figure out what time it is by where the sun is in the sky. It works pretty well. The clouds are also dynamic. They move around a little bit. Um, they're not all that, like, beautiful or anything. You can see there's just, like, a few little patches where there's, Less clouds, and they kind of change on a dynamic, cool little procedurally generated uh, algorithm, I believe. Uh, the weather, I don't think it rains all that often. I'm not sure it actually does. Either, oh, there is, yeah, it does rain. Uh, rain does exist in this game. There was actually patch like 1.6, I think, was the rain patch. Uh, and it was it was so named because it added rain. Um, I believe, I believe that's the case. I might be totally making this up right now. I, again, I wasn't playing in vanilla. I played in uh, early Burning Crusade is when I started playing this game. Because if I was playing in vanilla, I would have, like, been, like, four. Okay, not actually four. But this game has been around for a very long time. And, uh, and 
indeed. I am. I was quite young when uh, when I first began playing this game. Probably too young, especially for the uh, amount of time that I put into it. But that's okay. I, I learned a lot, and now that's actually serving me well. Surprisingly enough, to the, to the surprise of all, my my like playing of uh, of of video games has indeed and is indeed being useful. Uh, da da da. Let's get a little bit of iron deposit action here. Nice. Our mining skill is definitely catching up with us a little bit. You can see our interface here is a little bugged here in that it's not displaying our level properly here. Uh, if you're interested in how you can install mods easily for this game, there's a cool client actually called the Curse Client. You might want to look that up. Uh, there are some people that say it has viruses associated with it. I've never had a problem with that. Uh, and very few people have as far as I know. I think people just download mods that have viruses in them. So yeah, be careful with what mods you're downloading. Only download mods that a few like hundred or thousand other people have downloaded. But they're like all these interface mods and stuff can actually be managed by that client, and they'll it'll automatically uh, keep you up to date as long as you run it a few few times a week. Uh, it'll keep things keep things nice and and present for you. It's kind of like the Technic Pack. Oh, Fawzruck here, a giant. He's not elite. We may as well kill him. Why not? He's a giant. He he. I'm not sure what he does, but he might drop an item or something, uh, a quest item. Who knows? If there's a weird mob and he's not rare, and this one isn't isn't rare. Then it's uh, it's worth going ahead and checking him out, especially since he's not flagged alliance. That suggests to me that there's either a quest involving killing him that we'll get later, or he drops an item that's like, you find this on his body. Let's see. No, okay, nothing. Oh, but we can mine him. Oh, we need to be level 150 to mine him. Yeah, you can see there that the blizzard rule, or that the uh, the rule that I was mentioning before of uh, of skill level equals like player level divided by five or times five actually holds there. He's level 30, and we would have needed mining skill. 150 to mine his corpse. Uh, anyways, that's uh, that's my little my little piece of info here. That actually stops being true as soon as you get into expansion pack territory. Because the thing with expansion packs is that they increase your your level cap by either 10 or 5 levels, but they increase profession level cap by like 75 each time, which is of course uh, more than the level cap increase. Goshek farm here. Some nice uh, horde aligned little little grunts here. They actually aren't flagged horde, and uh, the alliance can kill these guys. It's very sad. There are alliance quests to kill him, uh, and it, it makes me very sad. You can see there's there's one of the alliance quest givers there, and there's another one that uh, are all about giving some horrible evil quests to kill these innocent peons. Anyways, uh, that the alliance are bad, and they should feel bad. Right. Uh, ooh, lovely, lovely little mountains here. You can see in this in this particular lighting, they actually look pretty cool. Uh, many, yeah, the, the zones. The, you can often tell which zones are old and which zones are new based on the mountain shape. Uh, newer zones tend to have more kind of rough carved mountains with more uh, jagged edges, and older zones tend to have more rounded mountains. That's just kind of a little guide, but uh, for the most part, the more kind of uh, rolling the terrain is and the less like sharply cut it is, the newer it is. Uh, and I'll try and show you that at some point in some future zones. Um, but this zone is like these mountains haven't changed much for a very long time. Uh, I don't think they actually, I, um, like, they might have changed a little bit in Cataclysm, but not too much, not too much at all. Uh, and so therefore you can see that they are quite rounded, and that's a good indicator that the zone is quite old. Anyways, let's head on into Hammerfall here. The uh, seat of the Horde in the Arathi Highlands. Indeed. Somebody just sent me a, uh, the Glyph of Cleaving. I'll, I'll show you guys actually how that works. If, if That won't have arrived yet, but it will uh, for next episode. Because it takes an hour for things to arrive when you're sending them between people. Oh, this is a good quest. Uh, Dr. Gregory Victor here, trauma surgeon. Oh, okay, this is a different one. Oftentimes, the best way to ensure our men sustain as few injuries as possible is to cause great harm to our enemies in their very homes and prevent battles from ever occurring. Travel to the Scarlet Monastery and speak with Dark Ranger Velonara in their graveyard. She is leading a forsaken assault there and could benefit from a seasoned warrior such as yourself. So this is an example of a, a quest that starts in a zone and that leads you into a dungeon. You can actually see that it's a dungeon quest based on the weird icon over there. Uh, and yeah, it's up back in Tears Fall Glades, actually. There's the Scarlet Monastery. It's a dungeon. I'm going to go ahead and untrack that by shift-clicking on it. Uh, anyways, those quests are not all that common in Cataclysm anymore. They used to be a very common thing, is that in order to get dungeon quests, you'd have to get the quests from various places outside the dungeon itself. Not very true anymore. Most of the quests you need for dungeon, actually you get inside the dungeon. And the quests that you do get from outside of the dungeon will just tell you to go inside of it. Uh, and that's that's one of the kind of design changes that they made with Cataclysm. That one I actually kind of like. And actually when we go into the uh, Outland for Burning Crusade content, 
you'll notice that that's not true. And it's, uh, it's a little bit more annoying, in fact, to venture into a dungeon, because uh, in order to do it optimally, you have to go gather all these quests beforehand, and some of them have prerequisites, and it's a real pain. Alright, I'm going to give you guys an attempt at my orc voice here. Thomkar warrior, if your deeds for the undead are as great as you claim, I am honored to help you serve the Horde. I'm very bad at the orc voice. Our race's gift of shamanism stirred me from a years-long lethargy. That means, uh, like sluggishness. Now I provide for all here, crafting the same boons that gave me newfound strength. The Highland Raptors are cunning and fierce beasts. Their spirits can grant our warriors great strength. Bring me raptor eyes so that I may make the amulets as Torgon taught me. I don't know who Torgon is. I assume uh, maybe an old quest giver from this zone. Let's see here. Do we have anything to repair? Yes, we do. Nice little repair there. Could have accessed guild bank funds to repair as well. I don't know how our guild bank's doing, actually. I'll go ahead and check that at some point. Uh, maybe we got enough money to get a new tab. Who knows? Ooh, a mailbox. Let's see what we've got in the mail. You can see also I'm now in resting zone because there's an inn right here. Oh, hey, we just got a glyph from Dregor. Glyph of Revenge. That requires level 40. Okay, not worth it yet. Or we can't use that yet. Uh, designed for true silver crab. Thank you. A glyph of Sunder Armor. Nice. Uh, and glyph of Slam. Awesome. I, I'll look into glyphs later, but for now... Oh, and anti has sent me some heavy leather balls. Awesome. You can actually throw those at other players. There's Griff of Heroic Throw, which now... My Heroic Throw will now apply a stack of Sunder Armor. Sure, why not? And, you know, I'm going to learn these. Actually, I'm going to learn all the glyphs, because uh, the glyphs... So glyphs were added in Wrath of the Lich King, and the way that they used to work was that you'd have to apply them. Uh, let me see here. Uh, glyph of Heroic Throw. Let's apply this. Uh, and uh, you used to have to apply them and then reapply them if you, apply, if you, if you overwrote them. But now, actually, you learn them once, and you can switch between them at, at will, uh, as long as you use Vanishing Powder to remove the old ones. Let's go ahead and, and equip our Griff of Heroic Throw here, because uh, I think that's the one that makes the most sense, given that we'll probably be doing a lot of single-target stuff. So now, every time we use Heroic Throw, it'll apply a stack of Sunder Armor, which, of course, is an ability that we do have in our Protections tree, uh, and we could be using that, actually, more often now, but since we're not tanking that much, we aren't really. I'm going to go ahead and put that in Shift-Z. Uh, anyways... Let's read through some more mail. Uh, he sent us another glyph we can't use yet. Some designs and stuff. Some heady lever balls. Yeah, we looked through those. Keep up the good vids. Thank you. Some nice little elixirs here. Let's go ahead and take uh, these elixirs of lion strength. We'll use one. Our strength has been increased by four for an hour. Jack Thule. Dear Dratnos, no, this doesn't have any gifts in it. I just have a mere request. I think you should change the guild banner thing and make it more reddish. Hopefully you consider this request. Sincerely, Jack Thule. Interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at actually... Our guild emblem right now is that kind of dragon thing on a white background with a blue, uh, a blue border. Uh, and I'll let you in on a little secret here, is that that's actually the one that it just gave me randomly, and I haven't actually changed it from there. But you know what, maybe on, in a future episode I'll actually look through all the guild uh, emblem stuff with you guys. Alright, let's see what else we've got here. Destricon. Hey, it won't let me deposit my gold into the GB, so I'll just give it to you. You probably are using a mod that is out of date, because that's uh, usually the issue if you're trying to, it, like... There's no way I could actually restrict you from depositing gold into the guild bank. And here's some stuff Shinner sent me, uh, which is still a bit high level for us. Right, uh, that's our mail. We've, we've checked our mail. I will always check my mail on camera that you send to this character. Uh, so if you have anything that you don't want to be seen on camera, you can send it to my alt character. Actually, YouTube is my alt character on this, uh, on this server. Ooh, we can learn dry pork ribs here. Awesome. And there's a butcher. Nice. All right. The Witherbark Trolls and Boulder Fist Ogres of Arathi are working together to rid us from this land. I knew it! I knew it! We, we mentioned that a few episodes ago. But we shall not meet our fates at their or anyone else's hand. We will slay them and show them that we too have a home here. The Trolls turn their back to us. Their backs to us. The Ogres would use us for food and bedding if we allowed them to. These things shall not be. We start our attack on the Witherbark Trolls to the south of here. Slay them in droves and return, and, and only return when their camps run thick with blood. See, this is why we play Horde. These guys are awesome. Not all forest trolls are foul nuisances like the Witherbark. North of here, in the hinterlands, is Revantusk Village, home to the only forest troll tribe still allied with the Horde. Even they cannot escape the cruelty of their brethren. The Vile Branch tribe wars with them, 
distracting them from our battle with the Alliance. You have fought well here. Speak with Urda if you wish to fly to Raven Tusk. Their village will have use of your strength. Okay, we can go there after we finish our Arathi quest. I have a feeling there aren't that many more quests because we've already finished the zone achievement. Uh, so we'll go ahead and wrap up here and then head up to the Hinterlands, uh, which will be our next zone. Yes, awesome. Some good old horde action here. It's nice we're kind of branching out from just the undead stuff. I assume this quest here is related to Arathi Basin, which is actually what that portal there is. Uh, ooh, Defiler Supply Officer. Nice, some, some cool PvP stuff here. We could actually get a trinket here that absorbs us damage and lasts some time. Not bad, and actually some, some stuff here if we wanted. Uh, Defilers, yeah, let's see how much honor we have. We have 99 honor, so we could actually, oh, we, we can get both of these, actually. Uh, yeah, okay, let's, let's, you know what, let's spend some of our honor. Grab a nice Defiler gear here, uh, for, for our service to the Horde. Nice. Awesome. Cool. We've, uh, we've actually, the, the stuff was useful there. And then the Defiler's Talisman, eh, that's kind of a, a weak trinket, because we have to actually use it, and to be honest, while I'm leveling up, that's, uh, not something that I have the effort to do. Oh, this is actually just a quest for doing Arathi Basin. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and accept this quest. Let's go ahead and read it. As you have no doubt heard, the League of Arathor is sending large numbers of troops into Arathi Basin. Eager for food and supplies. You can see I'm switching into my undead voice now because I realize she's undead. Eager for food and supplies, these alliance fools are intent to take and control the rich resources there. We must show them that Arathi will never again be home for humans. Go to Arathi Basin and assault the mine, the lumber mill, the blacksmith, and the stables. Pull down the enemy's banners, declaring those territories for the Horde. Go, Dratnos. Report to me when this task is complete. You can see how lame like the quest is, because it's related to the battleground objectives, and it's kind of forced. Anyways, we'll take that quest, we'll go ahead and untrack it, and then we'll do a uh, battle in Arathi Basin. Basically, anytime we go to Arathi Basin, this quest will get us some extra experience and gold. I think it'll even scale with our level. I'm not sure, though. All right, so we have a few quests to do. Let's go ahead and get some of these raptors killed, uh, because there's nothing quite like killing some innocent mobs uh, like raptors. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's, let us bring justice to those which are already in justice. Uh, yes, you can see there are actually quite a few levels below us. That's kind of unfortunate. Uh, we're probably not going to be gaining all that much experience from this, actually. You can see, you can see there that Sunder Armor just got applied, actually, by my hitting. Wow. Yeah, way below our level. Um, I'm going to make an executive decision here. All of our quests, actually, in this area, besides that one, are below our level. So I'm going to go ahead and abandon them. We're going to go ahead and, and head up uh, to... And even that one that we were doing from the, uh, from the thing we found a few episodes back. We're going to go ahead and fly on up to the Hinterlands. And we'll leave these quests for now. Let us, uh, let us do it. Let us, let us relocate, because we are below... Or we are above the level here, and it's bad. We are going to be... Yes. So actually, you can see here that... Back in the old days, uh, before one of the most recent patches, you didn't used to have all these flight points, and so if they actually wanted you to fly somewhere as part of the storyline, they actually would give you this little bubble that uh, was, wasn't actually a flight point. Like, you didn't have the Raven Tusk Village flight point, but you could click that, and they'd go ahead and actually fly you there as, like, a, a one-time deal if you got that quest. Uh, they don't actually have that anymore, of course, because now they give you all the flight points that are level appropriate for you. But uh, that used to be the case, and it was... Uh, you know, it was a pretty effective system. I'm not sure how I feel about them giving you the flight points. I actually kind of liked exploring the world, and it was kind of a rite of passage on your characters to, you know, have a little little go through the world. Actually, fun fact, uh, we're very close to soon. Uh, let's let's check here. Yeah, Midsummer Fire Festival. That's gonna have us going all over the world. Actually, if this if this let's play is still going in about a month or so, we're gonna have some awesome stuff where we explore the whole world. Hopefully, we can be around a higher level then, so we can actually safely do that. That'll be a nice little thing. I'm actually planning to do some a lot of WoW stuff over the summer. Uh, maybe some live streams and nonsense like that. Yes. Indeed. There's a large moth in my room. I'm somewhat distracted by it. It is somewhat distracted by my light. Huh. Alright, it's gone away. It's not a problem. Ooh, there's a quest down there that we can take at some point that was offered over there. Anyways. Uh, so yes, Raven Tusk Village is actually a horde city. Well, town thing. Uh, it's notable because it is the only... Uh, Forest Troll Settlement, which is still aligned with the Horde. The, uh, the lovely trolls of the whatever tribe this is. I, I don't know, maybe just Raven Tusk Tribe. Let's go ahead and take a look when we get down there. Sorry about the lag spike, by the way. I don't know what's causing, uh, those intermittent lag spikes. Yeah, Raven Tusk. All right. So the Raven Tusk Trolls are actually the only, uh, trolls that are nice and still aligned with the Horde. Or the only Forest Trolls. There are actually two types of forest, of trolls. There are the Forest Trolls 
And there are the jungle trolls. You can actually see that there's a boat out that way. Uh, that would be the Twilight Highlands there, which is a level 85 zone. Uh, anyways. That's quite close to where we are, actually. Here's a quest here. Uh, let's go ahead and... You know what? Uh, we've got... Yeah, we're pretty close to the end of this episode anyway. So, we'll go ahead and, uh, and call it... Call it an episode here. Next episode, we'll start doing some quests in this area. Uh, there are a lot to take. And we'll probably be doing some nice leveling. There's Lard, the innkeeper. He actually has a quest for us. But we should definitely go to... We'll log out here. Because uh, I'm going to be leaving now anyways. But logging out here is a nice thing to do because we are resting. You're resting whenever you're in an inn. And that means you'll be gaining rested experience, which is a uh, double speed gained experience. It basically, like, it'll fill over half of your experience bar. And then that, that, that portion of your experience bar will be earned uh, much more rapidly. Uh, it doesn't, that's not exactly how it works, but that's the best uh, kind of one sentence explanation. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. My name is Vendratnos. I'd appreciate it if you could like, favorite, comment, subscribe if you actually enjoyed this episode. If you didn't, Leave me a comment and let me know why, and I, I will try to read all of my comments. I used to be able to do that, but now more people are commenting than I can actually read, which is, uh, I still do read as many comments as I can, though, and I will try to read yours if you comment, uh, especially in these videos. I, I can actually read all the comments for these ones. It's more like the Technic Pack videos I do that get so many comments nowadays. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. My name is Vendratnos. Goodbye.